In this video, we're going to define what a conic curve is and when you should use them in your designs. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, I'm going to try to describe what a conic curve is, and then we're going to talk about when we should use them in our designs. So if you want to follow along, you can download this data set from the description of the video. What we're going to be doing is expanding our sketches, our construction, and our bodies folder. This design has a revolved cone, and sketch two is an intersection between a rotated plane that's in this design. When we're thinking about a conic curve without going deep into the math behind it, we're essentially taking a look at a plane that is cutting through this cylindrical cone. That's the very basic example of what creates a conic curve. There are variations of this depending on the plane angle going through the cone and the definition of the cone itself. Again, we're not gonna get into the math behind it, but in order to understand where these curves come from, it's going to be a plane cutting through in this case, a cylindrical cone. Now, for this example, the plane is actually going directly on the y-axis, and it's rotating about the y-axis. As I mentioned, there are variations of this where the plane can be up in space and cutting through the cone completely, getting uh, something like an ellipse out of this. But we're looking just at the specific example, which is the conic curve. So in order to adjust this, we're going to go to Modify, Change Parameters, you're going to expand our model parameters until you find plane one and manipulate this angle. If we go up to 89 degrees, this is going to represent a conic curve where the row value is close to one. If we take this down to one degree or relatively close to zero, this is going to represent a conic curve where the row value is almost zero, but there's a little bit more to it than that. If we look at this from the right view, the conic curve that we create in Fusion 360 is going to be the conic curve that gets defined by this plane cutting through our cone and then projecting it into 2D. So when you have a situation where the plane is almost at 90 degrees, the projection is almost identical to the conic curve cutting through this cone. However, when we get down to say one degree, the conic curve is gonna represent a very mild arc at the bottom. When we rotate this, you can see it's close to a true arc as the base of the cone but we're looking at the projection of this into 2D. To better understand this, I'm going to reset this value to 89 degrees. We're going to hide the cone, the body in this case, and we're going to start a new sketch on the right plane. For the new sketch, we want to create a conic curve. Now, we don't have to make sure that it's exactly right, but we want to start with our first point definition at the bottom left of our projection, the second point at the bottom right, and then our third point is going to be centered above the origin, just above our projection. Now, as we move this conic row value up closer to one, you can see that we are matching or relatively close to our plane cutting through that cone. As we bring it down closer to zero, we're getting relatively close to the plane cutting through the bottom of the cylinder, but projecting it into our 2D sketch. As we're somewhere in the 0.3 to 0.4 range, this is going to give us a parabola, something that's at about 45 degrees on our plane. And we can see that if we go into modify change parameters and we reset this to 45 degrees. So at 45 degrees, the projection of this into 2D is roughly equal to our conic row value of 0.346. So this is what we need to understand when we're trying to figure out what a conic curve actually is. But now that we understand what it is, let's talk about when we want to use it. So to do this, let's create a new sketch. And I'm not going to go deep into this topic here, but I just want to highlight one thing. If we were to create a spline, and then we wanted a very tight transition in the corner, and then we wanted to carry the spline out again, in order to do that, we end up having to have a lot of control points in this corner. If I had escape, select the spline and turn on our curvature combs. Because I've done this before, I can get a relatively nice result out of these curvature combs. However, as soon as we start to manipulate the handles or the location of these points, then we're gonna to start to affect the curvature and we'll get things like this little bump or this indention here that happens. And as we zoom out, we can kind of see that the curvature is going a bit crazy here. We've got a really tight radius. Now, the reason that we would want to talk about using a conic curve here is because what we can do is we can define that corner. 
we can define the conic row value that we want. And then we can add splines to the outside of it for the larger areas of curvature. So for example, we might want to connect these two. We need to do this with tangency in this case. So you want to move the tangency handle around till it's relatively close, or you can fix or lock down that conic curve. And then we can apply tangency between these two. And you can move these handles around and you can adjust the curvature as much as you want because now you're driving it based off of that conic curve. So using only a start and an end point to the spline and then the conic curve in the corner is going to give us a much better result in terms of the curvature. I'm going to increase the scale of this so we can kind of see what's going on. The conic curve in the corner is going to have much better curvature than anything that we could define with a spline, just adding additional points. And if we increase that conic row value, and then we take a look at the curvature here, once again, we've got a relatively straight section, very low radius of curvature, and then we've got a very nice transition into that corner and back out. So once again, this is a great way for us to define those curves without having to do it with a single spline. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, I could just do this with one spline and then I can control the handles and get a very similar result. And that is true, you can do it that way. However, the conic curve, there is less variability in what that curvature is gonna look like. You can use both of those, but conic curves are relatively structured in terms of how they're defined which means that there's much less of a chance for you to have bad curvature in those corners. There are reasons why you want to use them and why you don't want to use them, but it's a good idea to understand how they're defined and play around with them. See if they will work in your designs and give you a better result than just trying to do something with a spline. Now, I've talked about splines a lot in various videos on this channel, so I'm not really gonna dive deeper into splines here. I just wanted to talk about that conic curve since it's something that we don't generally talk about or use in any of our videos to this point. I do have an example later on in a future video where I want to use a conic curve, but if you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.